So we go straight into the sermon, which will be done by Brother Walter. And it's entitled, Signs of the Times. Let's give him now our own divided attention. Brother Walter. We are few in number this morning, <clears throat> but we are more than two or three, and we even have among us a little brother David from Zambia, who is uh, very welcome in our midst. I really enjoy the Sabbath school and discussion that we had, and your contribution, brother. Thank you so much. It's so nice when we meet someone for the first time and we see that we are on the same line same teacher, divine teacher, guiding us and bringing us into unity of faith. And uh, we know and we pray for that, that all the children of God, faithful ones, will be fully united. I have been having for some time, brother, I don't know how about you, but I'm having some kind of uneasy feeling. I feel that there is something going on in the world. I cannot even express it in words, but you know, I wouldn't say premonition, but you know, there is a great conflict going on in the world right now. Amen. And we, if we are connected with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit, we feel it, you know, you feel the tension. Yes. Do you know sometimes when you get in the room, <clears throat> when there are people together, and if the relations between people are not good, you can sometimes feel in the air something. Someone says you can, almost you can cut it with a knife, it's <laughs> something. Uh, tension. Today in the society, if you are watching the news, if you are reading, I said I will not be watching or reading the headline news, it makes you depressed. So many bad things happening and so much conflict in the world. And I want today uh, to share with you from the biblical perspective, from, pro from prophetic perspective, where are we in the streams of time, in the stream of time. Things are happening, unprecedented things, a large magnitude. Let's see what the Word of God tells us about this. This is not new. I will not be preaching to you anything new. You know these things, but let us, let us put it in a, a, a prophetic perspective. We are living, this is from 9th Testimony, page 11. We are living in the time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of, God, of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. Brethren, tell me, is not this being fulfilled before our very eyes today? Yes. Yes. Every lie, every word is right now being fulfilled. Remember what is stated here because this uh, statement will guide us throughout the whole study today. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn, mm. and what's happening? Bad things happening. Yeah. Bad things happen. Let's move to the next one. So, uh, what we are, can hear, uh, see here, the Spirit of God gradually being withdrawn, plagues and judgments of God visiting this planet Earth, the calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of the society, the alarms of war, and all these signs forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. We will see later in a moment when the Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the people on earth that someone else comes into the picture and he is causing a lot of trouble. Please remember that. People blame God, but it is not God. It is the enemy of God who is bringing judgments upon the earth. And these are result of Holy Spirit being withdrawn. Plagues and judgments, calamities by land and sea, state of the society, you can see conflicts and wars and economic problems. 
But these forecasts a great event of the greatest magnitude coming. The same source. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. Do you see that? You know, you heard about World Economic Forum, Bilderberg Group, the Council on Foreign Relations. Ah, powerful organizations, powerful people. <laughs> then you're having, uh, you're having uh, spiritualistic. Spiritualism is at work. All these false forces are, you know, fallen churches, apostate uh, religion, religions, and so on. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. Again, 9th Testament, page 11. Three years ago, we are approaching this milestone. We had COVID-19. In few weeks, the world has changed forever. Forever. We will never again be pre-COVID situation. The changes, rapid changes taking quickly the place in the world. Dramatically, whole world, there is no country that is exempted or was exempted. One more statement. The condition of things in the world shows that troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of the terrible conflict in the near future. Bold robberies are of frequent occurrence. Strikes are common. Thefts and murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed of demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice and every species of evil prevails. Brethren, yeah. again, you can see crimes committed, young people committing crimes. It happened in Toronto a few, few months ago. Young people in the park assaulted an elderly gentleman, homeless man, and killed a man. This is unprecedented. Satan takes control of human minds and leads them to terrible crimes. There is a great state of unlawlessness, violence. And do you know what is, uh, what is the historical precedent for that? How was the state of the society before the flood? Violence everywhere, and every imagination of their thought was evil continual. Now, we had this virus, <coughs> pandemic. We will mention that later on. Remember what Jesus said, there will be what? Pestilences. What are pestilences? Pandemics. Affecting the whole world. Infectious diseases. These are the images that we remember. ICU units. People on respirators. Vaccination. Even mandated vaccination. Then social unrest. Racial tensions in the society. Conflicts in the society. This is still there. You know, they, these are the images that we have seen in the past few years. You know, burning, looting, conflict. Mm -hmm. Second test, selected messages, page 402. We are rapidly approaching the end of this earth's history. And as we realize that Jesus is indeed coming soon, we shall be aroused to labor as never before. We are bidden to sound an alarm to the people. And in our own lives, we are to show forth the power of truth and righteousness. The world is soon to meet the great lawgiver over his broken law. Those only who turn from transgression to obedience can hope for pardon and peace. In the Sabbath school lessons, we discuss the relationship between the law of God and the state of the society and the conditions of the world. Brethren, it's impossible. It's a law of nature, law of God. If you violate, if I violate the law of nature, what will happen with me, my body, and my mind? We will be sick. It's a matter of time. You just violate the law of nature, and you will have consequences. Can people violate the moral laws of God and have no consequences? Impossible. Whatever men sow, they will reap. Those who sow wheat will reap what? whirlwind. And this is what we are seeing. People are destroying the very moral foundations of the society. Of gender, of marriage, of uh, <clears throat> order, civil order. Completely destroyed. 
So then we are seeing these terrible consequences. <clears throat> Let us move on and see what's going on. We are having wars. These are images from the you know, war in Ukraine. Last year started, it'll be one year, a few dates. I mean, we couldn't believe that tanks will be rolling in Europe. And they are, there is a terrible war. Casualties are, we do not even know how many young people have died. Estimates are that over 100,000 Ukrainians have died. 150,000 to 200,000. Russians, 50,000 or more. We don't know for sure. Civilians displaced, millions of people have left their homes. So this is a terrible, and then we are also having a danger of potential nuclear warfare. We don't know what may happen. Flooding, this is in China, 2021. Wildfires, the planet is burning. You have North America, you have Australia, you are having Europe. <clears throat> this is the devastating tornado in Europe, in Czech Republic, which is not common, crime. Then, immorality. And these are images from the earthquake in Turkey. As we were preparing to send out uh, these uh, notice and uh, circular letter to solicit uh, humanitarian aid donation, and by the way, I mean, you can, you can donate through our church, just designate for the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Uh, I mean, it's heartbreaking. And also, we have instructions. If you don't want to donate in kind, you can also bring items here to church. Uh, the data show that this is the deadliest earthquake in Turkey since Middle Ages. The death toll stands over 40,000 right now, but the fears are that death toll ultimately will be over 100,000. About 180,000 people unaccounted for. You, you don't even know, you cannot take dead bodies you know, from these bubble. It's horrible. I mean, it's heartbreaking, completely level. It was over one minute shaking, violently shaking, 18 kilometers you know, in the crust of the earth. Tectonic plates collided and it, it caused a terrible. Look, highways. Look at this, earth. Now the dog, rescue dog, is searching for the survivors. People are digging and trying to find those who survive. Complete buildings level, everything destroyed. Then there is a burning in the port, in one of the ports. Here is a young man listening for the voices of his dear close family members. Is there anyone calling for help? Could you imagine finding yourself in this situation? You know, this image went through the world. A father holding the hand of his daughter. She was alive for a while, but they couldn't take her out. She died. It's heartbreaking. Now, this boy was saved. His father is embracing him. I could imagine how he felt. An elderly lady, she's outside of her home. The temperatures, it's a winter season, temperatures drop to minus nine. They are outside with some people. So, what is our duty in this time? We are to raise the banner on which is inscribed the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Obedience to God's law is the great issue. Remember that, brethren. <clears throat> Let it not be put out of sight. We must strive to arouse church members and those who make no profession to see and obey the claims of the law of heaven. We are to magnify this law and make it honorable. Second letter messages, 4, 3, 1. I mentioned in the Sabbath school in the... Uh, experience time, <clears throat> the gentleman uh, <clears throat> put a carpet on our stairs in the, here in the entrance level area, <clears throat> and uh, he's of Turkish background, he's a devoted Muslim, and when he came here to work, we had a little chat. <clears throat> he appreciates Christianity through Christians, he appreciates the Bible and Jesus Christ, of course, as a prophet, and then uh, when this earthquake, we spoke extensively in the church about uh, Quran, about Islam, about Christianity, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> as this earthquake took place, I sent him an email. <clears throat> and I expressed our condolences in our, our church, my personal, for the suffering, immense suffering of people in Turkey and Syria. And I told him, look, my friend, these are the signs because interestingly, in Islam, they believe in the Jesus ascended to heaven. 
and that Jesus will come the second time. And I said, these are the signs that Jesus will be coming soon and we need to prepare for his second coming and we need to keep the law of God because the people are desecrating, violating the law of God and this is why we are having these problems. <clears throat> and these people in Turkey or in Syria, they are not more guilty than the people in other parts of the world. But you know what Jesus said when the tower was felt that those who died under the tower are not more guilty than other people. So what will be the catalyst when this final crisis will take place and how it will take place? There are many different theories about what will begin the end of the world. Matthew 25 gives us the clearest picture. This is the parable of ten virgins. And the agent that provokes or speeds significant change or action is a catalyst. So there are different ideas about the catalyst. So Matthew 25 provides clearest picture. I will not be speaking today about the ten virgins from Matthew 25, but I will just mention to you what is the catalyst which, which will trigger uh, this final crisis, especially for the people of God, the Church of God. So, if you remember uh, what all the ten virgins were sleeping, right? But what happened at the midnight? There was a cry. Right on come. And we know what will be that cry today. It will be the Sunday law. Again, I don't have time to give you all the full evidence for that, but I'm just stating here briefly. So they all woke up. So all seven Adventists will wake up when we see the Sunday law approaching. Let me give evidence from the scripture. Jesus said, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When you see certain things, when you see the branches, leaves, we had a we had a, a fig tree back in Europe. And I remember in the springtime, it's interesting the leaves are coming out, and then later the fruit. Let's read the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. We will be visiting Matthew 24 today. Now learn the parable of the fig tree when the, his branches yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise you, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Therefore be also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man come. Christ is giving us an example of nature, how in nature there are certain things happening, and clearly indicating that something follows. So wow, what is now? How do we apply it? And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things. He was telling them when they were looking at the temple in Jerusalem that not a stone will remain upon the stone. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Tell us when shall these things be, they ask him, and what shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world. So Christ's disciples, when they heard that the temple will be destroyed, it was a shocking news. They could not imagine that the world could anymore exist once the temple is destroyed. So they asked him when the temple will be destroyed and what will be the sign of the second coming. There is no possibility that the world would continue once the temple is destroyed. So what did he tell them? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Brethren, I would like to stop for a second here. Are we in danger today to be deceived? What do you think? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We studied in the Sabbath school lessons that Satan will try to deceive even who? Very hard. Very hard. Yeah, that's right. He, he's having under control the whole world, but now there is a little group who keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus. If he could deceive them, his victory would be complete. So we have to watch very carefully that we be not deceived. And how we can avoid deception? By going to the scriptures. And by having the Holy Spirit with us. Then what did he say? And you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that he be not in trouble. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Do we have wars and rumors of wars? Yes. Some people say, well, but the wars have been in the past as well. Throughout all of human history, there have been wars. However, we will see in a moment what Christ meant. Let me go on. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and 
pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, all things are the beginning of sorrows. I was preaching on that in the past, and if you remember correctly, the beginning of sorrows says that the beginning of the birth pangs. Like a woman in a labor. Yeah. These birth pangs start how, ladies? You know that, who have born children. Start slowly, and there is a great, uh, greater intervals and lower intensity of pain. But as the birth approaches, the frequency is, you know, yes. greater and the pain is greater. So the same is happening. Yeah, the wars existed in the past, but as we approach the end of the world, the wars are more frequent and a greater intensity. What kind of wars did we have in the 20th century? We had two world wars. Such wars have never been in the past. And the wars are becoming more deadly and more devastating even Third World War, we cannot imagine it would mean simply annihilation of the human race. So this is what Jesus meant. Yeah, there have been wars in the past, but we are facing wars that have, the world has never seen. There shall be famines. Are there famines in the world today? Yes. yes. Yeah. Rather than the food supply, food production will ease and will be a major issue in the world. Please mark my words, biblical words. There will be terrible famines. Food supply is in short supply. Then there will be pestilences. We had COVID-19. There will be more pestilences. I don't want to speculate and to tell you more about COVID. COVID seems to be caused by a virus that was man-made. I'll tell you. We will come to the statement from the spirit of prophecy. We are told clearly that Satan himself works in the laboratory of nature. And he is also inspiring people to create such terrible viruses that, you know, create world pandemics. Earthquakes in diverse places. If you pay attention about earthquakes, not only in Turkey, not only in Turkey and Syria, the earthquakes in the last few 10 days, there was earthquake in Romania, 5.0. In Croatia, there was earthquake in Buffalo, not far away, 4.0 earthquake in Buffalo. Brethren, the world is shaking. We will see more of these events. This is not the end. There will be more of these in diverse, and this is the beginning of sorrows. Now look, in Luke we have the same account of Jesus' sermon about these last day events. We read verses 25-26. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. When there were signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, there was a great Lisbon earthquake, 1755. There was a sign in the sun, actually a uh, dark day, right, you remember? 1780, there was falling of the stars, meteoric shower, 1833, preceding the day of judgment, starting in heaven, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts hailing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Brethren, today, People are apprehensive. People are fearful what is coming. Although these, uh, this COVID just kind of eased off and passed, but people are not completely relaxed. They do notice that. They're not completely relaxed. And these events like these earthquakes and tidal waves and tsunamis and all these that are, will be coming more. Now let's read the words of Jesus. What is coming? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. What do you think? What is coming next? Persecution of God's people. We will come in a moment to that. For these natural disasters, God's people will be blamed as offending God, divinity. They will ultimately realize that 
there is something more than just natural disasters. Uh, you see, even in this COVID pandemic, uh, it's interesting that even in Seventh Adventism, People have taken, but have, have been taking different positions. Some people refused to be vaccinated, and they were demonized. Did you notice that? Yes. They were called you know, names. Some people were saying that they, they should be denied health care. Yes, they hear that? Let them suffer. Let them die. This is. Rule and inhumane. But this is in our time. We just heard it. Yes. So, brother, we're having a foretaste of what is coming. Yeah. We can see scenario, the model, the pattern, what will be happening. Let's read on. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Do we see that? Yes. Oh, yes. All statistical data show that the younger generation, the more and more people are agnostics and atheistic, not affiliated with any religion. They don't care about God. It's on the rise. There is one Christian apologist who was giving a lecture to the Christian community, the biblical Christian community, and he was saying, why are you surprised with this what we see? In 19th century, we introduced, no, first 18th century rationalistic philosophy, enlightenment philosophy. Man's mind is the guiding light. We don't need God. We can establish moral laws ourselves. Moral, human, moral autonomy. The 19th century, by having evolutionary theory, we don't need God for creation anymore. Everything came, you know, through evolutionary process, blind forces of nature, random chances, no God. And now what's happening? They have driven God out from the schools. No more prayer. No more reading of the Bible. Interestingly, he said to evangelize today, some Christian, uh, not Adventist churches are saying, if Billy Graham would be alive today, he would not be having such crusades as before. Because in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, he was still dealing with some people who were in the school, as young children or home, heard something from the Bible or about the God and Christianity on which he could build. But we are living in a post-Christian nation today. These people are scripturally illiterate, this young generation. So this is the world, you know, in which we live today. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now it's time to endure to the end. Now it's time to hold the faith. And when we read about this, who comes to your mind? Who has endured to the end? Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If they call you names today, if they call you straight-laced or, or narrow-minded or extremist or fanatic, but you stand on the Word of God, don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Stand for the truth. Now are we preparing for the final crisis? Now are we showing which side we are leaning on or choosing? The more popular side, the broad way, or are we leaning on the narrow way that leads to life? And Jesus is the one who went before. So the question here is your fear greater than your love. If we are focused totally on the time of trouble that is coming, we may lose our focus. If you are more afraid of the time of trouble than you are filled with love for meeting Jesus in clouds of heaven, you are not going to make it. So our fear should not be greater than our love for God and for Jesus Christ and His appearing. We need to know Jesus and love His appearing. We need to know who is coming, who is coming, the person, and we also need to know what is coming. Some Adventists are saying, oh, well, I don't know, I don't want to hear about the signs, what is coming, I just care about who is coming. Yeah, I agree, but we should know also what is coming. 
Why would Jesus tell us about these signs unless there is a purpose and benefit from knowing what is coming and from knowing where are we in the stream of time? We should know the time of our visitation. So Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness and to all nations, and then shall the end come. This gospel will be preached in all the world for a witness. Many, many will not accept it, but it will still be preached for a witness. And we should do it. We should spread the great controversies. We should uh, preach the message through media, person, tract, every possible way we should reach the world. And then the end will come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Again, I had a sermon on abomination of desolation, but what did Jesus mean that abomination of desolation standing in the holy place? Roman armies encompassing, surrounding the city of Jerusalem, when they will be standing on that ground, when you see that, you know the time has come for Jerusalem to be destroyed, and you should run out of the city. Then let him, them which be in Judea, flee into the mountains. Brethren, this will be literally fulfilled in the near future. This prophecy is not only for destruction of Jerusalem, this prophecy is for our time. And there is abomination of desolation in our time, and we should know what it is. And what we should do when this happens. Let's see from the inspired text, what is this abomination of desolation? When Babylon sins reach the heaven, <coughs> not until this condition shall be reached, and the union of the church with the world shall be fully accomplished throughout Christendom, will the fall of Babylon be complete. The change is a progressive one, and the perfect fulfillment of Revelation 14, 8, this is the fall of Babylon, second angel's message, is yet future. But this will be fulfilled. When do her saints reach unto heaven? Revelation 18, 2 to 5, this is the fourth angel, right? When the law of God is finally made void by legislation. So when we see this happening, this is the abomination of desolation, like in the time of Jesus, when the Roman armies, this will be union of church and state. When we see that when the law of God is made void by the legislation of the land, then we know that it's time to leave the big cities. Immediately. Let me give you more statements. So you can speculate about the meaning of COVID-19 and civil unrest. There are, these are the signs that we call the pestilences and wars and rumors of wars. Jesus said that these are the signs of my coming, but the end is not yet. When Sunday law is passed, all our plans at time will come to a screeching Old, and priorities will dramatically change. We now have young people who attend universities or trade schools. We have people contemplating marriage. We are having people who are building and buying and selling and all this. And that's okay. I mean, if we do it in the fear of the Lord. But at some point in time, everything will stop. Priorities will dramatically change. I remember back in Europe, in former Yugoslavia, where I lived, when the war started, we had a business, pretty good business, pretty good life. And we heard that the war is coming. But you know, you are thinking like, oh, well, it may, it will, you know, they will prevent it, it will stop. So, yeah, some of you are here from that part of the world, and brethren, it came. We were hoping your Yugoslav army was a powerful army in Europe. They will stop these politicians, crazy politicians. They will simply preserve peace. But Yugoslavian army disintegrated like a house of cards, just fell apart. And then you're having <clears throat> war and factions started war, terrible war. Business stopped there, never again to operate. When I come back and visit my family's home, my parents' home, there are machines still there, 30 years after. <laughs> I've seen it, how things can change, dramatically change. 
So brethren, as we engage in various activities in this world, we should always keep in mind that we are very close to the end of all things, that things can change very quickly. Let me give you more statements from the Spirit of Prophecy about what is going to happen. Fifth Testament, 464, 465. It is no time now for God's people to be fixing their affections or laying up their treasure in the world. The time is not far distant when, like the early disciples, we shall be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was the signal for flight to the Judean Christians, so the assumption of power, the part of our nation, in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. Hear that? Direct parallel with the time of Jesus. As Roman army surrounding the city of Jerusalem was a clear sign to leave the city, so likewise assumption of the power on part of our nation, which is the United States, making Sunday law will be a sign for us to clearly leave the big cities. It will be then time to leave the large cities, preparatory to leaving the smaller ones for entire homes in secluded places among the mountains. And now, instead of seeking expensive dwellings here, we should be preparing to move to a better country, even a heavenly. Instead of spending our means in self-gratification, we should be studying to economize. Every talent lent of God should be used to His glory in giving the warning to the world. Brethren, can it be any clearer than this? Can it be? No. No. It's absolutely clear. I heard some young people you know, thinking about the future, you know, saying, I want to become filthy rich. Wow. Something is wrong. And this is how the world looks upon the life. I want to be really very rich. <sighs> Nothing wrong with the riches and with the wealth, but this should not be primary objective of life. If God blesses us with material possessions, they should be used for what? There are great needs in the world to bring relief to the suffering and to spread the good news and to warn the world. This is what we should be doing. Satan works through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls. He has, you now brethren, when I hear about this earthquake in Turkey or Syria, when I hear about tens of thousands of people dying, I feel sorry because Satan is reaping the harvest. These people, if they are not repented and hear the message, they are lost, right? This is what he's doing now. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. See, as far as God allows, Satan is using the laboratory of nature. It is God that shields his creatures and hedges them in from the power of the destroyer. We will come to that. If these four angels would not hold back the winds of strife, we would see an amazing destruction right now. So God is still restraining Satan and the winds of strife for how long? But Satan is causing destruction. Look at this destruction. This is in Germany. Just, you know, about a couple of years ago, flooding in, in Germany, landslide. We can see more of these images. But the Christian world has shown contempt for the law of Jehovah, and the Lord will do just what He has declared that He would. He will withdraw His blessings from the earth and remove His protecting care from those who are rebelling against His law. Great controversy 589. God has especially blessed the United States of America and other Protestant lands in the world. These are the most prosperous countries in the world because they accepted the gospel. The gospel Bible. But as they are turning back on God, as they are despising His law and violating you know, God's principles and God's government, God is withdrawing His protection and more suffering is coming. Look, this is in Europe. Flooding in the streets of Europe. While appealing to the children of men as great physician who can heal all their maladies, He will bring disease and disaster. Who? Satan until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land. 
in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in thousand forms, Satan is exercising what? His power. People are blaming God for these natural disasters, but Satan is at work because God is withdrawing his protection. And this will be happening more and more because the Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the earth. So we have these pestilences, you know, we have COVID, in laboratories of nature, we have evil men and Satan working together. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and disaster, the distress follow. He imparts on the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become what? More and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both men and beasts. Have you noticed how animals are suffering? <coughs> they are sick. They are diseased because of human sin. Again, tornado in the Czech Republic, let me see. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. Huh. What he will do? He is causing the trouble, now blaming God's people. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those whose obedience to God's commandments is a perpetual reproof to transgressors. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. Well, there will be fires and earthquakes and floods, and then he will blame people of God. That this sin has brought the calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are travelers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. Now let me ask you a question. Who was accused to be troubling Israel? Huh? Who? Elijah. When Ahab met him, said, Are you the one who troubles Israel? And what did Elijah tell him? It's not me, but you and your father's house departing from the law of God. But we will be accused, God's people will be accused, and they are causing, bringing all these disasters up on the land. Because they don't keep the Sabbath. This is why we have drought. The restraining spirit of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, tempests, fire and flood, these disasters by sea and land follow each other in quick succession. Science seeks to explain all these. Now pay attention to these. The signs thickening around us telling us of the near approach of the Son of God are attributed to any other than the true cause. Sixth Testimony, page 48. Is science today trying to, to explain these natural disasters? What they are saying? What is going on? Climate change. Wow, oh, thank you. Climate change. It's front and back. Every headline news. Climate change, climate change. Scientists confirm, Con world conferences. They are attributing the changes to any other but to the true cause. And what is the true cause? Spirit of God being withdrawn, Satan having control and bringing these disasters. That's a true cause. I'm not saying that humans have no certain impact, negative impact on the nature, but this is not the main cause. So this is from Toronto, from uh, our area, Barrie, a few years, a couple of years ago, that horde was there in Barrie, that devastating tornado. So, this can happen here. So, four winds are released. When men cannot discern the sentinel angels to restrain the four winds, that they shall not blow until the servants of God are sealed. But when God shall bid his angels lose the winds, there shall be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. So why is God still restraining the winds? Because not all the people of God are sealed. We are living in a time of sealing right now, and this is our, should be our concern as seven Adventists, that we receive the seal of the living God, because only if you receive the seal of the living God, you can be protected from this, when the winds will be fully released. I don't know, have you paid attention to the State of the Union address by the President Joe Biden? He delivered it in the U.S. Congress just you know, I think it was uh, February 7th. 
Let me <coughs> quote him directly, verbatim. This you can find on the, on the website. Look what he says. Look, the Inflation Reduction Act is also the most significant investment ever in climate change. Ever. Lowering utility bills, creating American jobs, leading the world to a clean energy future. I visited the devastating aftermath of record floods, droughts, storms, and wildfires from Arizona to New Mexico to all the way up to the Canadian border. All what he says. Now pay attention. This Inflation Reduction Act is also the most significant investment ever in climate change. Ever. So he's telling you and me, climate change is at the top of my agenda, legislative agenda, and budget agenda. Now let's go on. <clears throat> let's face reality. The climate crisis doesn't care if you are in a red or blue state. It's an existential threat. We have an obligation not to ourselves, but to our children and grandchildren to confront it. I am proud of how, the, how America, at last, is stepping up to the challenge. We are still going to need oil and gas for a while, so he will phase it out, right? But guess what? No, no, we do. But there is so much more to do. We got to finish the job. What does he mean by saying? That's a powerful statement. Let me unpack it briefly to you. There is an effort to radically transition our economy and our lives in the coming years. It's coming, <clears throat> whether we want it or not. The Biden administration is taking on the fight against the alleged climate apocalypse head on. He talked about new jobs, new infrastructure, new energy industries, and new comprehensive, ambitious, and swift action for all of America. It's right now taking place. But there is someone else with a similar agenda, you know that? Yes. Laudato Si, on care for our common home. So church and state will be working together. This is happening on a worldwide scale as other nations are also pushing to reduce global emissions. The goal of sustainability, sustainability is part of Pope Francis' concept of a global ecological conversion, a term used in Laudato Si, in Sicilia. Pope Francis contends that an ecological conversion is required to address the global environmental crisis, which he refers to as both a moral and spiritual crisis and an ecological crisis. This was the same message pushed out by Joe Biden, who essentially made the same arguments during his State of the Union speech. <clears throat> These policies will lead to a control of various aspects of our lives, including our spending, energy usage, free speech, travel, and many other human behaviors. Censorship of voices of, or media deemed by the government to be spreading misinformation will be implemented. Initiatives like car-free Sundays designed to reduce our carbon footprint. The coming social credit system. A score based on citizens' behavior which can affect employment, housing, banking, education, and buying. They are preparing to implement this for the common good. <laughs> common good. Same agenda. On the secular side, government side, and on the religious side. They're having the same plan. Pray for rain. Many responsible positions will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but from the sacred desk will urge upon the people to observance of the first day of the week pleading tradition and customs in behalf of this man-made institution. They will point to calamities on the land and sea, to the storms of wind, to the floods, earthquakes, destruction by fire, as judgments indicating God's displeasure because Sunday is not sacredly observed. These calamities will increase more and more. One disaster will follow close upon the heels of another. And those who make void the law of God will point to the few who are keeping the Sabbath of the fourth commandment as the ones who are bringing wrath upon the world. This falsehood is Satan's device that he may ensnare the unwary 
creation service page 155.2. So, brethren, <clears throat> I just want to make you aware that this is taking place right now. Climate change agenda will not go away. And this will be a vehicle that will be used because there will be more and more climate, something needs to be done. And they know what they will do. It's in secret, being prepared. But Jesus told us, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days, <clears throat> those days that, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We are living in these days. People before the flood. Life as usual. They were seeing some signs, but they were attributing them to wrong causes. They did not acknowledge the true cause. And there will be something terrible happening. Watch therefore, for you not know what hour the Lord your Lord cometh. But know this, that if a good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. If you would know, <clears throat> there is a proverb in uh, my homeland, old country, that if a man would know when he will uh, step, fall, he would watch his step, right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> brethren, we have cases, people dying suddenly in accidents. We don't know. It can be accident, it can be disease, it can be who knows what. Or it can be we can live to the Sunday law. We have to watch. If you notice, when Jesus gave all these signs, the main thought was watch and pray and be active in my service. Because you don't know when. You don't know when. But we see the signs. And let me leave you with these thoughts. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, stars and upon the earth with stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for the fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. This is happening now. It will be happening more and more. People will be fearful, terrified, perplexed. Because of these natural disasters, the state of society, pestilences, famines, wars. But look what Jesus said then. Before the fig tree. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, what to do? Then look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption joy. Amen. When we see all these things, what shall we do? Somebody is coming. Our best friend is coming. I remember when I was a child and some dear relatives and friends were coming to visit our home. We as children, maybe you remember the same. We couldn't wait. We were asking, when? Mom and dad. Man, when are they coming? And they tell us, oh, they're coming, you know, tomorrow. When they're coming. You cannot wait to see that person. Are we so anxiously awaiting, expecting the return of our Lord and Master? That's a question. Are we working to prepare the way for His second coming? Are we bringing our families in order, teaching our children, our youth, our neighbors, telling them, you know, I feel the burden today when I see someone on the street, whoever I talk to, I feel the burden, I know what's coming, what's happening now, to tell the people, because we love people, that Jesus is coming. The people we see, you know, come out in the shelter and receive the seal of God. So we as Seventh-day Adventists today, we have a Solemn duty. If you know these things, Jesus said, we study in Sabbath school lessons, accountability depends on the knowledge, how much we know. But brethren, we should not be fearful today. Please remember, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Lift up your heads. Jesus is coming soon. 
a better place. No more sin. I wrote to my <clears throat> friend, Turkish friend, I said, look, Ahmed, Jesus is coming back. No more pollution, no more sickness, no more death, no more earthquakes. God will create a new earth. And these powers that are in the deep in the earth, you know, in interior of this earth will be used. God will burn up the whole world and make a new world. But before we can't get there, we have to prepare, we have to finish the work that we have started. So brethren, be with courage. You will see, I guarantee you, from this holy place, we will see more disasters. This year, who knows what it will bring? For sure. But we know one thing. If we are on the Lord's side, if Jesus is our best friend, if we are looking up on Jesus, keeping close, you know, uh, walk with him, we will be safe. One day we will be in proud of it. It is being our experience. Amen. 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 So we run into the end. Prayer of the one <clears throat> oh, loving and gracious Father in heaven as your children we come to your throne of grace to thank you Father for being with us on this Holy Sabbath day in a special way we have felt your presence throughout the Sabbath school through our prayers and our singing and throughout the worship service Father, you spoke to us through thy inspired word. We have heard the words of your son, Jesus Christ, speaking to us living the last days of earth's history. We have seen the prophecies fulfilled in the past. We see them being fulfilled right now. And we know whatever you have foretold will surely come to pass. Mm -hmm. oh, Father, help us to, to have full confidence in your promises. You reveal to us mortal, sinful human beings, the great mysteries from your Holy Word. You gave us your Holy Spirit that we can understand the truth for this time. Lord, pray that we would heed the truth, that we would pray, uh, have a great appreciation for what you have done for us and what you have revealed to us, and that we can share it with others, that we may implement in our lives. Lord, as we see the signs of the times, Help us to prepare, to be active, to be hopeful, to have courage, not fear. Help us to have your love in our heart, that we may keep your commandments. When the whole world will go against you, when they will make your law void, Lord, that we would stand in defense of your law, especially the Holy Sabbath commandment. I pray for the brethren who are assembled here, young and old. I pray for each one of us, Lord, for our families, you, Lord, need our, you know our needs, and you only can supply them. We know that thy Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from this world, but we know that you will give abundantly thy Spirit, even in the latter rain, to thy faithful people. Help us, Lord, to be sealed with the seal of the living God, that your protection will be over us when you will release the four winds. Lord, be merciful to thy people. We see the forces of evil gathering, consolidating, and strengthening. We know what is coming. Help us to be watchful, prayerful. Help us to put our complete confidence in your Son, Jesus Christ, and in his merits, that we may trust your grace. Lord, be with those who are sick and heal them, comfort those who mourn. And be with those who are suffering in these calamities in the world. And Lord, help us be your witnesses. Be with us in the remaining hours of this blessed Sabbath day. And bless us, Lord, richly. We ask and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.